Scott, thank you for joining us. It's a difficult afternoon here at the Broadfield Stadium as we lose out 1-0 to Wrexham. Can I get your thoughts on the game first? Um, frustration um, would be um, the word I would use with that. You know, we dominated the ball all game. We were outstanding. Um, we created really good chances, certainly in the first half. I thought that we had probably more of the ball in the second half. Didn't create as much. Uh, clear cut chances certainly in the in the second half because of the way they kind of defended deep. Um, but I'm really proud of my players. Um, I thought that we were excellent today um, against a really strong side. Yeah, as you say, it's a really strong Wrexham side. Do you think we just missed that sort of killer instinct today? As you say, we looked really good on the ball, lots of passing. You know, I think we probably dominated the possession stat, but in the end, the, the goalkeeper wasn't really tested, was he? Well, Dan Olsey, you know, misses a big chance in the first half. You know, there's a couple of chances in the first half. You know, I disagree with you. I think um, I think that we we did enough to win this game today in terms of chances as well. So, no, I disagree with that. Um, but I also think that in the second half, with all the possession, um, they camped in. We didn't create clear cut in the second half. Um, we we made some poor decisions. Kind of when we got camped in there, and we got them in there. You know, we shot when we maybe should have had an extra pass. Um, we had an extra pass when we maybe should have shot. Um, once we beat the man. Um, we then didn't pick somebody out. We didn't beat the man enough. Um, so yeah, we're kind of frustrated with with the final third stuff in the second half. But I thought we did enough to win the game. Is there some credit to be owed to the Wrexham defence? You know, we've been scoring a lot of goals recently, and they're the first side to shut us out in a great number of games. Uh, you've got to give credit to the Wrexham team. Never mind the defence; the whole team was behind the ball. You know, they didn't have kind of, I think they you know, like Fletcher up the top of the pitch for large periods toward the, towards the end of the game, you know, and, you know, they banked in and made it really hard. There was no spaces, you know, we, we just had to kind of keep, you know, knocking the door down and, and hope that one would drop, whether it's a slide pass, whether it's a shot or, or, or whether it's just, you know, being patient, playing round and round and round um, until we get an opportunity to, to pull the trigger or, or make a pass in the box or, or dribble in the box or drive in the box, whatever it may be. Very disappointed, obviously, in the first half to lose Ben Gladwin, Adam Campbell. Yeah. I'm not sure if that was injury force or not. That change. Is there any updates on those two at the moment? Or is no, it too, it's too early. Up? Yeah, too early. Too early. But do you think that you know Ben Gladwin coming off so early obviously naturally changes the game, doesn't it? I suppose. Um, yeah, it does. But like we, we've got good players to come on in, in place of him. You know, Lolas was. I think he got man of the match. I heard kind of towards the end of the game. So you know, we know he's a good player. Um, you know, so you know that's not really any different. You know, obviously Gladwin's our captain and leader, and we we probably feel a little safer with him on the pitch. But when he's not on the pitch, we've still got good players to to you know take his place. Yeah, a bit of a gap now to a league game. We've got two cup fixtures coming up. Obviously now the Morgan game's been postponed, and I suppose it's just a chance to get back to winning ways as soon as possible. Yeah, um, we don't like back to back uh, losses. You know that was one kind of challenge that I set the players today was that we don't go back to back losses. It's important to me that you know we keep kind of ticking off the games and picking up points. Um, but yeah, disappointed with that. But yeah, we've got um, we've got two cup games now, so it, it will be an opportunity for me to put some much needed rest into some of the players who have played lots of minutes. Thanks, Scott. Scott, you obviously didn't have Liam Kelly today. How much of a miss was that? And did, did you think it had any impact on? Um, yeah, big miss, obviously, because he's a very good player. But I thought Aaron Henry was outstanding today um, in his place, you know. Um, so he's very similar to Liam in the way that we play and the way that he plays. Um, so I thought Aaron was very good today. But obviously, you know, not having Liam on the pitch is always going to be a big miss. Um, but yeah, it's just unfortunate. You know, obviously got concussed. There's a protocol that we've got to go by and, and you know, for the, the players' kind of uh, well-being. Yeah, and when ben, ben Gladwin came off, um, I don't think anybody would think Lolos is the sort of natural replacement for Ben Gladwin. What was the thinking behind that? Yeah, he is. Fair enough. <laughs> it's completely the the natural, you know, <laughs> change for me. Yeah. I think that he's very similar to Gladwin in many ways. You know, he glides with the ball, he makes things happen. Um, he does well when he's facing up. You saw him score the late goal um, out here. I can't remember the game. Um, Tramier, yeah. he scored the late goal, he's facing kind of the, you know, the. he's not with his back to goal, he's facing it, so I think he is a number 10, I think he's a complete replacement for Gladwin. Yeah, and um, obviously it was quite a physical game, there were a few yellow cards for the, certainly for the Wrexham players, what, what was your view of the tackle on Campbell, did you think it was a red straight away? Um, I think it'd be harsh for me to comment without looking back at it, I think it was a bit of a distance away from me. Um, 
but it's yeah, it didn't look great, obviously. But um, you know, without I don't really want to comment too much on that without me looking back. And the physicality of Wrexham, did that have any effect on your team? Were you expecting that? Do you think? No, it's League Two. It's League Two. You know, we my players were were fine with it. You know, we completely dominated the game. In my opinion, I thought that. I thought we were very good today. I'm really proud of the team. We go after performances. Performances are important to me, and and the results will be a byproduct of that. If you play that game like that another hundred times, you win it probably 98. Thanks, Scott. Thank you, Scott. As you mentioned, it's a very frustrating afternoon. It felt like, in a way, it was deja vu of the Gillingham game not too long ago, where it was just they were sat behind the ball and we had to try and break the lines. Uh, it's it's obviously very very frustrating when you sort of have to sort of deal with that for the remainder of the game how like how frustrating are you that it just wasn't our day today yeah very frustrating you know it's um, we've got players on the pitch who can score goals you know uh, Dan Orsi's got four already you know uh, Adam Campbell scored four Nick Sarula scored four uh, Darcy's on two you know and Lolas is on a couple if not probably three um, so you've got players who are on the pitch who are capable of scoring goals but when you're playing against a team an experienced team at that who bank in sit in you know, they scored a goal out of nothing, by the way, uh, out of nothing. Um, but fair play to them. You know, they've come here, scored a goal and then put everybody behind it. You said you have a couple of cup games sort of to, I guess, resurrect this result or have the correct reaction for this result. And as well, you freshly sort of played Sutton, who, is, who are one of the games. Is, it, is that going to give you a bit of confidence going into the game that... You know, you had a very good result against them last time, and coming again here. No, I, I don't. I haven't really thought about that yet. You know, I'm just kind of still mulling over what's happened today. Um, but come tomorrow, I'll be ready and ready to go again and, and work out what we're going to do and who's going to play and who's going to not play. Um, so I've not looked at that yet. Obviously, we just spoke about the Gladwin sort of miss and Lolos coming on straight away. But how impressed were you with him? A man of the match performance, and he seemed to be very, very dangerous at times as well. Yeah, he's a good player, isn't he? You know, he finds spaces really well. He handles the ball very smoothly, and he glides with the ball, and he can chop from left to right, right to left. He can hit it with his left. He can hit it with his right. Um, he's a good player, um, and, and we kind of like knew. Listen, we didn't want Ben Gladwin to come off the pitch, but he did. And like I said before, he's a perfect replacement for him. As well, sort of the possession stats were very much in favour of Crawley. Are those just some of the positives to really take in from today so far? Yeah, yeah, of course. We're, we're pleased. We want to own the football. We want to have all of the ball. And we did say kind of one of the biggest things was that we know they've got a long throw. We know they've got good corners. We know they've got good free kicks. We know that they fling the ball in your box at every opportunity. Um, but one thing that I wanted was, was to have all of the ball today in order for them not to be able to do them things that they're good at. And I felt that we did that brilliantly. Of course, on top of which, we need to make sure that with all the possession we have, we have to make sure that we get goals. We have to make sure that we you know, create chances. We did create chances today, for sure. We did create chances today, but probably not enough on reflection of the possession we had. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Dan, thank you for joining us. Obviously, it's a disappointing afternoon here at the Broadfield Stadium. Can I just get your thoughts on the game first? Yeah, obviously disappointing to lose, like always. Um, I felt we probably put in a good performance overall, looking at the game. Um, but obviously, yeah, you've got, you've got to get three points at the end of the day, and we didn't manage to come away with that today, and everyone's a bit disappointed in that. Yeah, and the gaffer just touched on it, really. We had a lot of the possession, we had a lot of the ball. We just seemed to sort of lack that sort of real killer instinct in the, in the final third, but... In terms of you for playing up front, it must have been really frustrating and I suppose credit has to go to the Wrexham team who by the end were putting all 10 men behind the ball, weren't they? Yeah, listen, they went down to they went down to 10 men. Once you get a 1-0 lead here, you're naturally going to sit in because they know we're, how good we are at home. Um, yeah, we had chances in the first half, myself included. Um, on another day they go in, goals, different result going into half-time, but that was just disappointing on the whole. But... I guess we'll keep going with the performance and keep playing the way we're playing because we know we're going to win more than we lose. Yeah, and I suppose it's easy to sort of keep the morale high knowing that it's not necessarily the performances that are letting us down. You know, the work rate's there, the performance is there. Sometimes it is just sort of, you know, the way it, you know, the way it breaks for each side. So I suppose, you know, the lads, you know, going into, you know, the rest of October are still going to be pretty confident, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, I think obviously today it hurts and probably tomorrow it's going to hurt, but Monday's a new week. We know the way we play. It's an enjoyable way to play. One enjoys playing it. The gaffer, the staff, putting a lot of hard work during the week. So when you don't come away with three points at the weekend after a good performance, you're obviously down about it. But 
again, we'll look to the next one and, and work hard for the next week. Yeah, and I suppose it's a testament to us, isn't it, that we're disappointed, you know, with the one 0 defeat to a side that, you know, a lot of people have said they should walk with, walk away with the league this year, and you know, it shows how far we've come over the course of this season, especially from last season, that you know, a result of this hurts so much. Yeah, definitely. I think we've had a good start, and I know the gaffer said it before. It's just the start, and we want to keep it going. And it's a twelfth game today, I think. So, still early days, but to put in a performance like that against a team which was obviously tipped for promotion and we were tipped for relegation and we're still at the top end of the table. Yeah, it's a credit to, to the club as a whole, but we want to win games at the end of the day. So, yeah, we'll keep going with the performances and hopefully the next one's a win. Cool. Um, Scott was just saying about the Rex using a bit of the dark arts to, to kind of see that game out and really kind of stuck men behind the ball after getting that opening goal, which was obviously completely from nothing. Do you think that kind of was difficult to break down the way Rex are playing today? Um, yes and no. I think at times, obviously, we had a lot of the ball, broke them down a few times, created a few chances. But again, when you're 1-0 away from home, we'll do it when we go away from home as well. Dark arts, it's part of football and even more so in League Two. So. It wasn't anything we probably didn't expect or haven't come across in the past. And credit to them, they've done it. they done it extremely well towards the end, as you can see. So yeah, yeah, of course. And how much of a miss was Liam Kelly today? Obviously not being able to play because of that head injury was that a problem for Crawley? Um, yes, I know. Obviously Liam's Liam's one of the better players here. Um, class. He keeps us ticking over. Does really well on the ball. Um, but again, I thought Aaron came in today was really good. Um, you can see the quality he's got in training and he probably hasn't had a chance this year because of how well Liam's done. Um, so, yeah, obviously Liam was a miss, but I thought Aaron did really well today. Yeah, absolutely. And was it frustrating, I guess, with the amount of shots you had, the amount of possession you had, that you couldn't quite turn that into a goal? And But does it give you confidence that you're able to, able to improve on that because you're creating the chances and, and having the possession? Um, yeah, yeah, obviously you want to put the ball across the line at the end of the day, but... No, we, we created chances, we kept the ball, we recycled the ball, went side to side and I think you could see how tiring they found it and by the end of it they were just literally sitting in just thinking just don't concede and I think we all had the belief because we've seen it a few times this season where we're going to get one, we're going to get one and um, today it didn't seem to come but obviously past few weeks it has so we'll wipe our mouths and we'll go again. Yeah, and obviously you lost your captain quite early on to, to injury, Does, was that kind of a bit of a, a blow as well but obviously Clyde Lawless came on and performed really well. So, kind of, how do you how did you see that? Yeah, obviously, Skip, unbelievable player, unbelievable career, and I think you saw the boost he gave us when he came back. Um, I think it was the Stockport game. Um, just his presence on the pitch alone is massive, even before he even touches the ball. So, yeah, obviously, it was a loss. But Clyde, we've seen how well he's done this year, coming off the bench, chipped in with a few goals as well. So, I thought he came on and done really well as well. And there's a two-week sort of break from the league now until we play against Crew uh, in a couple of weeks. But then there's two cup games in between. Is that sort of good prep to get the league form back on track now after what is it back-to-back -back losses now? Yeah, I think so. I think obviously having a break from the league in one hand good, but uh, for me personally, obviously I want the next league game tomorrow if possible. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll use the two weeks. We'll work hard on the training ground. I'm sure the way Gaffer is, he won't stop and keep drumming it into us, keep making us better. So. Yeah, I guess we could work on a few things in the next couple of weeks, but at the same time, we've got two cup games to take seriously as well, and obviously want to get results in both of them. In the last three home games, Crawley have scored at least three goals or more uh, in these fixtures, and obviously coming today, we haven't got any goals at home. Obviously, very frustrating in your position. Is that something that probably just fuels you for the next game as a striker to really sort of, you know, a couple of games without goals? Does that really fuel you to get some? Yeah, I think I think you look at it. You know, you're not going to score every game. Um, before today, I had two and two, so I was on a bit of a hot streak, shall we say? Like in my head, I was confident going into it. Um, as you are as a striker, when you score, I'm pretty sure you can ask any striker in the league or any league. Um, and obviously today, to come away without scoring, personally, but more so as a team, it's obviously disappointing. But you, it happens in football, I guess. So we'll move on to the next one. Right, cheers, Dan. Thank you. No